Hi, and welcome to HVAC R Distillery, where we talk about everything and anything that's related to the HVAC R industry. My name is Jamie Kitchen, and today we're going to talk about thermostats. Now, for most people, if you ask them about a thermostat, they're going to picture, you know, a digital thermostat or something on the wall of their house that brings their furnace or their air conditioning off or on. Well, this does something very similar. Here we have a thermostat that you'd find, say, say in a walk-in box. This one has got a nice long capillary tube, and inside of this is a mixture of liquid and vapor. And as it measures the temperature, if the temperature rises, the liquid in here turns to a vapor, the pressure rises in this little cap tube, and it will cause the contacts in that thermostat to open or close. Here we happen to have one that has a room sensor. It's coiled up here, it sits on the wall, and it measures the space temperature. So whereas this one could be mounted in a ductwork measuring air, or even mounted on the side of an evaporator measuring the air off the evaporator, okay, this one is designed to sit in the air. You may have also run across something like this. These are the little mechanical thermostats that you'll find in commercial refrigerators and freezers or glass door merchandisers. Okay, so there's a large range of controls or thermostats that we can have. If we take a look at this control, you will see there's a set of bellows right here. And on top of that, there is a spring that's opposing that, those bellows. And in between, there's a common linkage that's attached to a set of contacts. So if the pressure in here rises or the temperature rises and the pressure rises, the bellow is going to expand against those springs, against the spring, and is going to move those sets of contacts. So they can open on a rise in, in temperature, close on a fall in temperature, or vice versa. So thermostat takes a temperature signal and converts that to an action or takes a set of contacts and switches and turn something off and on based on a temperature signal, okay? The other thing I want to point out too, you may be familiar with set point, okay, because you've probably all done it before in your life, change the setting on a thermostat. What you may not realize is in a lot of refrigeration thermostats, we have this value called differential. Now differential is the value between the thermostat turning something off and turning it off. So if I turn it on and turning it off. So let's say your set point is 36 degrees in your walk-in cooler. If your differential is set for six degrees, it will allow that temperature to rise up to 42 degrees again before it kicks in and starts that unit up. So 36 plus six degrees is 42. Now the differential is important for a couple different reasons. If the differential is too small, it will cause rapid cycling of the system. So compressors can overheat, you can lose the oil out of your compressor. In other words, it goes out in the system, it doesn't come back. And dehumidification in product quality can also suffer. Because what ends up happening is you don't run the system long enough to properly control humidity. So your humidity then can build up and you can have mold and other issues occurring. The flip side, of course, to that is if your differential is set too large, the system runs for very long periods of time and then it's off for very long periods of time. And you have these very large swings in temperature between the off and on cycle. This can cause excessive dehumidification. So if you think about fruit, for example, or meat, the majority of that mass is moisture. So when you sell something based on weight, you're really selling it largely in part based on the water quantity that it contains. So if you dehumidify it, you, know, you dehydrate it, you're really pulling that moisture out of it and you're reducing the quality of that product. It cannot be sold for the same value it could as if it had been kept in an optimum humidity, optimal and humidity environment. Okay, so the differential then can either be fixed or set and it determines the temperature difference between cutting in and cutting out, turning on and turning off. All right, so let's go back and take a quick look at this control. You've got a set of screws here that you bring your conductors in. A lot of times you will have a common and you will have a contact that will be open and you will have a contact that will be closed. And when the control hits its set point, those contacts will reverse and the one that's closed will open and vice versa. So 
We talked about set point, differential, and the electrical contacts in here. Let's talk about what's inside of these. Now, I already mentioned that there's liquid in this which can turn to a vapor. We call this a vapor charge. Okay, it's a bit of a misnomer because again, it's liquid that's turning to a vapor. These work great with one exception. The part of the sensor that you want to measure has to be the coldest part of the system. Why? Because this is a continuous loop of container. Between here and here has the same charge in it. It's continuous. Now, the problem is this does not care what part of it is the coldest. The vapor and liquid will migrate to the coldest part and condense regardless of whether it's here or down here. So if you have this sensor in an area that is three or four degrees warmer than say this, which can be mounted on the side of a unit cooler, the evaporator, what's gonna happen is, if this is three or four degrees colder than what you're actually trying to measure, the control will cause the compressor to cut out three or four degrees warmer than what you want, all right? So to combat that, we use what's called an absorption charge. Now an absorption charge does not really have the liquid in it that a vapor charge does. What it has is there will be a bulb at the end of this and there will be what's called an adsorber in there. Now that absorber can release or absorb vapor based on temperature. And because there's no liquid to migrate, generally speaking, the only part that does any sensing and causes the control to open or close is that absorber part. So you place that somewhere, as the temperature rises, it releases more vapor, brings the pressure inside the control up, causing the trip, and vice versa. So if you want to mount this on the side of a wall with an adjacent freezer, and this was in a cooler, or you're going to mount this on the side of a unit cooler, which is, you know, very close to the evaporator inside, so the recommendation would be to go to a absorber charge as opposed to a vapor charge, okay? So I want to come back to one thing now, and that is the differential and how the differential is affected by evaporator temperature. So if you look at a control, doesn't matter which one it is, thermostat, you will have either a fixed differential or a differential range that you can adjust to. So far, so good. The caveat there is that that value is at a specific evaporator or space temperature. If you deviate from that temperature, the amount of differential is either going to increase or decrease. The lower the evaporator or space temperature is, the lower the control temperature is going to be, the larger that differential is going to be. Okay? So, Let's say you have a, a control that has a fixed differential of say four degrees, all right? If you were to use that in a freezer, all right, if you were to look at the lower end of the temperature range for that control, your differential wouldn't be four degrees. It might be eight or nine degrees, okay? Now, this could be a problem because if you just happen to have a control that you always use in this cooler and you try and apply it to an ice cream freezer, suddenly your differential is going to be twice as large as what it was. So this can cause excessive run times and product quality. Okay, what's the uh, you know, answer to that? Well, you pick a control that has the differential range or fixed differential at the temperature that you are going to operate at. So rather than having a control that you use for every single one of your applications, and don't get me wrong, a lot of these controls will work from minus 40 or minus 20 to plus 50 degrees, which looks great on paper. But again, you have to look at your differential and how it changes based on your evaporator temperature. And a lot of people don't realize that. And I've seen lots of situations where these systems run for extended periods of time with very large differentials because the control that they put in there really is not designed to have a small differential when operating at low temp, okay? So pick the model that is gonna give you the correct differential for the application. And you say, well, why is this the case? I'll wrap this up with this. If you look at a pressure temperature chart, let's say R404, we got one right here, okay? If you're going from say, minus 25 to minus 20, 
or minus 20 to minus 15. A five, um, a five degree temperature difference, say going from minus 20 to minus 15, is only going to give you about a three and a half or four pound pressure rise. Now, if you're operating this in a warm cooler, and you're going from 35 to 40 degrees, again, a five degree temperature increase, that same five degree temperature increase is gonna give you about an eight or an eight and a half pound increase in pressure. So when you think about it, you're trying to overcome the spring right here. Now this spring doesn't care what your evaporator or space temperature is, all right? It is going to give a certain amount of force. The differential spring in here is going to exert a certain amount of force that needs to be overcome in order for those contacts to change position. So if it needs an equivalent of say six or seven pounds to move it so the contacts change place, in the low temp application, if you only get about three and a half pounds for a five degree change, you're going to need about an eight or nine degree temperature change in order to make it work. On the high side, you're only going to need a four or five degree temperature rise for the same effect. Okay, so once again, to wrap it up, thermostats, sensing element come in two types. Vapor, which has a little bit of liquid, they're great, except they're susceptible to changes in temperature between the body, the bellows, and your sensing element. The part that you want to measure the temperature or the temperature that you're trying to measure must be the coldest part of the system. Absorption charge has a little bit of absorber in there that releases or absorbs vapor based on temperature and it overcomes that limitation. All right. The controls have a differential. This differential is right here. Set point, you set based on the temperature that you want the box to be at. The differential is going to be how high or how low the temperature will be allowed to drift after the system is off before it comes back on again. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, I look forward to your questions and comments. As well, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. So as always, be safe. Thanks for joining us. Take care. See you later. Bye-bye.